Hey folks, Jim McCallum here with our hometown. I'm here in Regal Woods sitting in Dave Park's 1950 truck wishing I were the owner of this beautiful truck. But during the next 30 minutes we're going to interview Dave and some of his neighbors who own these beautiful vintage tractors here at Regal Wood. So stay with us as we explore our hometown. Hey folks, Jim McCallum here. We are in Regal Wood, uh, just north of the Brunswick County line in Columbus County. Our viewers will be watching this in March, but I will tell you it's a bitter, cold February day. Uh, my buddy here is Dave Parks. Am I right. am I right, Dave? That's right. Dave is with the Cape Fear Farm Heritage Association, and behind us are just a few of the dozens and dozens of tractors that will be a part of your event. Uh, coming up in March, am I right? That's right, that's right. March 21, 22, and 20, March 20, 21, and 22. All right, we'll get all the details out and then we'll talk about it. The uh, The location is? At Lake Waccamaw, at the boys and girls home there at Lake Waccamaw, at their uh, horse complex. Right, just off 74. Yes, sir. And our viewer, most of our viewers will know where that is. Yes, uh, sir, there will be plenty of signs with plenty of directions. And. and you're going to have dozens and dozens of old vintage tractors among all the other events that are going well, on. Well, actually, there will be hundreds of tractors wow. and uh, trucks and cars and uh, uh, other lots of other things going on. A lot of events going on. Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about those. I know you've got events for those of us young and old. Absolutely. <laughs> there will be uh, children's games going on with pedal tractor pools and and shelling corn and pumping water with the old uh, hand pumps and uh, lots of things for the children to do uh, lots of things for the for the older children like you and i to look at the old uh, tractors and implements that were used back in when we were young kids which i love so much absolutely yeah, yeah. Um, it's called the cape fear farm heritage association and tell us a little bit about that. We'll get your mission statement on the, on the screen. Okay. Well, that is our club name. Uh, okay. We, we organized in uh, in the fall of 2008, and immediately started making plans for our first show, which was in March of 2009. Uh, but we have a, a membership of I will say probably around 70 or 75 people. But no it's, kidding. Uh, uh, we probably got. 25 or 30 that are real active and and uh, you know the the ones that really make things happen we've got a, a a good a good bunch of people but and we're getting some younger people most of most of our membership are, are older and and we're really reaching out trying to get some younger people involved because i mean that's the future of our organization uh if we don't have some young people involved but anyway we uh we started immediately with when we organized putting together uh, our show uh, to to show to show off our our uh, our collection different collections and you you don't have to be a member you don't have to have a tractor mm -hmm. uh, just to uh, have the interest in it and, sure well but, uh, I'm one of those I don't have a tractor but I have a great interest yeah I but, did have uh, a tractor years ago <laughs> well good yeah we uh. Uh, a lot of us are, you know, are, grew up on the farm and, and that sort of thing. Right. But uh, our show is, is benefits the boys and girls home there. We a, a, a big portion of the money that we take in at our show is donated back to them to help with the programs that they have going on for for young people with problems and and coming from. Uh, homes with problems and and let's tell our viewers a little bit about the boys and girls homes and I, I may not get it all right but I can tell you that there are uh, boys and girls there um, that, that, that spend the year round there yes they go to school they live they, there th they are uh, from uh, troubled families yes uh, a lot of them stay there and graduate from high school and, and move on into adulthood right right and I understand that a number of organizations in this entire 30 or 40 mile area sponsor uh, uh, make make endeavors to sponsor um, 
homes there or facilities there or or to provide money. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so our viewers, viewers will know it's a wonderful, wonderful project. It is. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Um, can you recall, uh, what about some of the other events that go on there? I, I, I wanted to mention this too. Uh, vintage automobiles, trucks, Absolutely. those types of things? Absolutely. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, yeah, there will be tractors, uh, cars, trucks, hand tools. Okay, uh, that's uh, interesting. There will be, I mean, lots and lots of displays of old hand tools and farm relics and uh, things that were used in the home as well as in the field. Yeah. And, at, you know, around the barn. Yeah. But uh, there will be working farm animals, mules and horses that will actually be plowing and disking and doing things and pulling wagons and riding right. people and so forth. Dave, I'm looking at your red jacket. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. We're here at your spread. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I grew up on a farm in Bladen County, and uh, we were a Ford farm, and so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, that's. You're a Ford man. Well, I'm a Ford man. Good I'm, for you. I'm a, I'm a diehard Ford man, and I've got uh, several Ford tractors, and uh, I've got a couple Ford trucks, and got a couple Ford cars, but uh, I enjoy, enjoy the you know at one time i had a couple of off-brand tractors so to speak <laughs> but uh my son and i decided that we would uh, go uh full forward and uh and that's what that's what we have well we and have. similarly we're going to see some of the other brands here today yes as well. yes yeah. and and at the show you will see you'll see all different uh makes colors and and ages from the early uh early 19s and 20s uh uh 1920s and right on up to uh, some in the 70s and 80s. Uh, now most of the vintage tractors are gasoline, am I right? Well, gasoline, but there were a lot of a lot, a lot of diesel, but most of them are gasoline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's review your uh, your uh, dates and your event. It's the Cape Fear Farm Heritage Association March. Help me out. M March uh, 20, 21. 20 21 and 22. We'll get that right. 2021 and 22. And, and the actual show name is Southern Farm Days. Okay, great. The show is uh, Southern Farm Days. Great. Uh, Dave Parks, uh, thanks so much for hosting us here today. And we're going to take a quick break and then we'll see some of these other tractors, including your Ford tractors. Okay, that sounds thanks, great. Sir. Sounds great. Thanks Thank so you much. for being with us. Yes, sir. All right. The ATMC grant, uh, the project is called uh, Project Forte, uh, fun opportunities to rehearse together every day. And so what I was trying to do is instead of just the conventional means of practicing and performing with uh, uh, the ensembles, I wanted to kind of spruce it up a little bit more and to meet the students in the 21st century. So what I did was I applied for iPads and software and uh, electronic instruments and things like that so that they could have opportunities to rehearse with technology that they're accustomed to using. Uh, at first, they didn't like it because now I'm really working them in the class. They had to do a lot more work, uh, but now they, they enjoy it and it, it's becoming a little bit easier for them to read music and to sight read and to practice. And they're finding different methods and different ways to practice. So overall, it's really helped them a lot and they kind of see the benefit behind it. The students are invested. That's what makes it so unique because they enjoy what they do. They enjoy playing and they enjoy playing the music that we have for them. And so what makes it so exciting for them and exciting for the parents is that the students are having so much fun and the parents can relate to the students engagement in the uh, uh, music and the different genres of, uh, uh, and styles of music that we play. Showing value to what we do as music educators. Um, usually, um, you know, at, in specific grants they're more so geared for technology and STEM, but the arts has also been able to benefit through ATMC and it, and it shows the students that they're making progress and that they're valued in the community and they, that they're cared about. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's absolutely wonderful to have such a top-notch service come to Columbus County. Columbus County has been extremely underserved and underserviced 
for so many years whenever it comes to telephone, home internet, television, and home security. So I grew up in Brunswick County. Uh, my mom actually worked and retired from ATMC. Grew up with ATMC in the home, first with television and telephone. Then we went to home security. And again, grew up with it, moved to Columbus County uh, about 10 years ago and have missed ATMC ever since. But with ATMC, it's all about customer service. Customer service with ATMC is top notch. What makes ATMC so special to me is that the people who work there, the CEO, the management team are people that I've grown up with and I know. Um, it, it makes things a lot more personable. It makes, things, it makes interactions a lot easier and a lot more smooth. You call, you talk to someone, someone who's happy to be there, happy to help the community. You always get a call back uh, wanting to know how your interaction was, and I think that's very important. To have high-speed internet is, an, is absolutely outstanding. It would take someone an hour to download something that would take a minute now. I would absolutely recommend ATMC services to anyone and everyone. I can guarantee you no one will be disappointed. Okay, uh, Dave, we're going to enjoy seeing some of your vehicles. The first one is this 1950 Ford truck. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, it's a 1950, you said 1950 Ford F7. Uh, originally, it was a fire truck. Wow. Uh, and I bought it at, at, after it had been retired and uh, restored it to, to a little road tractor because I'm in the trucking business. Right. And uh, I've got this uh, 51 trailmobile trailer uh, behind it. Where, where, where'd you get that? Well, actually, the... The, the the part that I had used from the old trailer, I, I got it from uh, over in Ivanhoe, North Carolina. I found it actually actually found it in the woods, and the gentleman agreed to let me have it if I would uh, make sure it didn't get to the salvage yard. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I hope the camera will pick up the attention to detail of this really beautiful truck. It is it is restored to what should I say pristine condition, or as new or better. Probably better. Yeah, I would say so too. Uh, everything about it is just just remarkable. Uh, Dave, we're going to move around here to you. You have two tractors, and you're a Ford guy. We already know that. So yeah. tell us a little bit about these two Ford tractors. All right, this tractor is a, a 1946 model. Uh, okay. This gray one, and it has what we what they uh, refer to as a funk conversion. In the in the early 50s, the farmers were wanting to. to needing to do more work with their tractor but the little 23 horsepower tractor would only do so much so right, a couple right. guys a couple guys came up with an idea of stretching the tractor out and putting a six cylinder ford motor in okay. it so th this tractor is it has one what they call a funk conversion uh they changed a 23 horsepower tractor to a 95 horsepower tractor well, by changing the motor but boost. but the amazing thing to me is that the original transmission and rear end held that extra power. Wow. Uh, Dave, just as a guesstimate, how many hours would a guy like you have in restoring oh. something like this? Did you take it down to the frame? Absolutely. Right. That, 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 Tell our viewers what a frame off restoration is. Well, you just completely disassemble it. You right down to the nuts the, and bolts. Sand ballast it, take all the old paint off. Uh, and go back and then replace everything, gaskets, all rubber, uh, hoses and wiring and the whole whole nine. And, matter, then, and then rather than months, and, and, and most of the time, a, a much better paint job than what they had originally. Right, right. Well, it's just fabulous. Let's, let's move over here, Dave, to your other Ford tractor. And, and my recollection is that a lot of these uh, Ford tractors were blue. Help me out with the colors. All right, well, they, they, they changed it. They started out with the gray tractor. Okay. In, in 1939, when, when Henry Ford came out with his first r real tractor, he had some Fordsons earlier than that, but they were gray. And the story behind that is 
that Henry Ford bought surplus Navy paint to paint the tractors. Fair enough. And and they vary a very in originally they varied in color because the paint varied in color. Mm -hmm. He might get a barrel of light gray or he might get a barrel of dark dark gray. Sure. But anyway, they changed to the red and gray tractors in forty eight when they came out with the eight in Ford. Okay. And they stayed with the with the gray and red until sixty two when they came out with the blue tractor. All right. That's but this is a nineteen fifty five. 950 Ford. Actually, it's called a row crop. And has it got a big front. six in it? No. It's got what? A big six? No, it's a four cylinder. Okay. It's, it's, it's uh, put back together original. This is a weight box. Yep, right. And it's got weights on the wheels, and that gives it, it, gives it added weight so it can pull the three bottom plows behind it. Sure, sure. And, and did you restore this one also? Yes, down right. down to the bare metal and and come back with it all the way. I, I may have asked before. Did it, did it takes a couple of years to do this? Well, it, you can do it, and if it, 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 it depends on how much free time you have. Sure. Because sure. I mean, it is a hobby. Sure. Uh, Dave, we'll take a quick break, and we're going to look at some of the others here in just a moment. Thanks okay. again. Thank you. Yeah. LC Outreach offers alternatives for students to enhance their education programs and those programs consist of a summer academic program so students will not fall into the summer slide by forgetting information they learned the previous school year and we also have an after school program that's housed at Cedar Grove Middle School and we offer after school um, tutoring at no charge to students at Cedar Grove Middle School. We call the Community Service Programs CAP. CAP, Community Assistance Programs, and our vision was to um, service our senior community by doing different um, projects, service learning projects in the community. Also, we wanted students to understand the importance of giving back and actually doing things and helping in the communities that they live in. I feel like LC Outreach has had a major impact on this community by providing a free academic service that many families in the community cannot afford. Um, a lot of families are looking for academic services during the summer months. Some of them are able to afford it, a lot of them are not. Um, and especially with after school tutoring, any fee based tutoring service is going to be quite costly. And being that we live in a low income area and a lot of our families are low income, I think that LC Outreach has provided a valuable service that they probably wouldn't be able to afford or to receive if they had to pay for it. Oh wow, we want to say a very big shout out and thank you to ATMC for awarding us this grant. It has allowed us to buy the materials and items needed to carry out these community service projects. Um, and we just want to say thank you again. We had had some issues with phone service and with our internet service. And you would wait a week. I can't be down a week. I can't be down a week waiting on my credit card machines to work. So um, when we got the call, it was, it was a no-brainer. Let's do it. Cash is like non-existent in here. We do so many credit card transactions, and that's why, you know, it hurts us really bad. And our customers, when we're down, when our credit cards are down, you know, the machines, because nobody cares cash anymore. Yeah, and it moves faster. It yeah. moves faster, which helps us, because oh, when yeah. it's a line at lunchtime, you want it to speed on through and let's go. You don't want to have so. to, you know, dial up or wait. It's just, you know, automatic. So that, that's, that's a convenience for our customers as well, because, you know, they're on a lunch break trying to get back to work, so they have a limited amount of time. Well, we've had a lot of positive mm -hmm. feedback. Yeah. A lot of people, now, I've, you know, if people are eating a meal, I would rather than put their phone down and talk to one another. Yes. <laughs> but I also know sometimes Time is of the essence, so if you're grabbing a bite to eat and you might have to do a few things while you're eating, right. multitask as most people do, it's very convenient. A lot of people have told us that they, they really appreciate it. Yeah, because so. before when people would come in and ask for our Wi-Fi password, we weren't able to give it to them because it would mess up with our you know, credit card machi machines. and Kind of slow us down. Kind of slow us down, and so now that we can offer them that service, it's, it's a positive thing. And they're, a, you know, 
customer base service and we are too so we want to it's just nice to deal with somebody that you can actually have a familiar face and put a name, and, to, and a a face. name to a face right and um yeah. and our local sales rep is emily and so she's checked in mm -hmm. with us several times and in fact monday she was in here yeah. um she had eaten and was actually using the guest wi-fi to do a few um business things and yeah it was nice to be able to provide that for her but i know if and we have a problem we can call right and get somebody. Yeah, we can get somebody that's right down the road and not halfway across the world. Everybody knows that we've got it here, so they're constantly saying, well, when are you coming my way? When are you coming my way? So well, they see the signs, they, they say, the where signs. are they going next? Right, <laughs> everybody's really excited about it. Yeah, I, I'm really, I wish it would, yeah. I, I hope they just keep <laughs> on expanding yes. and, and come on in. And I like the fact that, like you said, it is a co-op. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a community-based um, company. It's going back into the community, and I, I, I think it's a great thing. Yeah. That means a lot. Yeah, it does. I'm here with Mr. Robert Mills. Mr. Mills, uh, this is your John Deere. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Mills, this yes. is your yes, John sir. Deere. And, and come on over here. And it is a beauty. Um, you've restored it from the ground up. Right. Yes. And, and what model? Tell us a little bit about the. It's, it's a 1954 Ford John Deere, two cylinder. Did you say two cylinder? Two cylinder. Okay, I'm learning something already. Um, did you restore it from its original? Uh, uh, what was the condition when you found it? it was in foul shape, <laughs> <laughs> you know, real rusty, and then the tires were flat, and a lot of sheet metal was bent up and all along. Are, are you a mechanic? Because I'm not. How, how do you do this? Well, I've been a mechanic all my life. I okay. worked in General Electric 27 years as a maintenance mechanic. And, and I started working on tractors about 25 years ago, and I've been doing it ever since. Now, am I right in recalling that you have several tractors? Yeah, I got Tell us a little bit about your collection. I have four farm moles, two John Deere's, Alice Chowers, a Ford, two in Ford. And, and, and you still have quite a few of those? Yes. All right. Uh, come on around here and let's let's give everybody a good view of the of this beautiful tractor. Uh, it, it, the, the attention to detail and the uh, beauty of this restoration just knocks me out. Um, it, it's right down to the every little detail. Tell us a little bit about it. You, you, you take them apart to start with, and then you start back put, building them back. You sandblast everything, and then you put new seals, new gaskets, and everything. And if the engine on this one here had to be rebuilt, I had to rebuild the engine on this one here. And these are the vintage John Deere colors, the green and the yellow, am I right? That's right, that's the original colors. Yeah. And some of these other uh, tractors are of other colors, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, thank you for showing us this beautiful John Deere tractor. Thank you. We're moving right along to Mr. DJ Peterson and his farm all tractor. Mr. Peterson, tell our viewers about this beautiful piece of work. Well, I wanted an F-20 because my grandfather had one when I was a, I got a picture of me as a, as a baby on the tractor with him and uh, I wanted the F-20. Was that what you showed me on your phone? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I found one with a overdrive on it so you could drive it in a tractor for a, in a tractor ride. Right, right. You couldn't drive a six mile an hour F-20 in a tractor ride. So well, you're that, right. You, so you're that's right. why I went and got it. How, I went how, to Thurman, North Carolina to get it. I was about to ask you how long and how hard did you have to look, but uh, Thurman, North Carolina. Yeah. Um, you can see the Blue Ridge Parkway where we picked it up at. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's my, my masterpiece for me. Well, uh, it is a masterpiece. That's a good term. I'm glad you said that. And, and it's in such beautiful condition that you only use it for special parades <laughs> and similar <laughs> occasions. Is that right? Right, right. Our, our viewers would need to understand that this is a beautiful vintage uh, piece of work. Yeah. 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 Uh, anything else you can tell us about it? Well, you are talking about the colors of tractors. Yes, sir. That, the farm walls were gray until 1936. Okay. In 1936, they started painting them red. This is a 37 model. Well, the, the little brief little bit of research I did 
uh, educated me to the fact that they're peculiar, distinct colors for different brands of tractors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Uh, the International calls that Rouge Red, <laughs> and you really can't you really can't copy it. Rouge you have Red. To, you have to go get it from them if you want the real color. I, really, I like that. That's a good term. Uh, thank you for being with yes. us, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm here with Mike Porter. Mike, uh, thanks for showing us your beautiful tractor. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it was, it, it, uh, was my dad's tractor. Uh, I rode, rode it for many a days uh, on the farm when no, I was a youngin' and everything. It's a 53 Alice Schaumer, uh, 26 horse, no, 23 horsepower, uh, two row tractor. It gives you a lot of meaning to the fact that it's in the family, right? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. You didn't have to go anywhere to get it. No, yeah. <laughs> over to Kelly. All right. But you restored it. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, tore it down into a thousand pieces, took everything apart, uh, sandblasted it all, primed it, and uh, painted it. Did you sandblast it yourself? I sandblasted it myself. Wow. Uh, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you just have a sandblaster and you just uh, and you work every piece. Work every piece. Wow. Um, how, how, when did you, excuse me, how long did it take you to restore this beautiful piece? I, I probably worked on it three years. Yeah, and three it, years. And it's gasoline. Yes, sir. And, and in terms of getting parts, do you have do you get them online or do you get them from other uh, Alice Chalmers uh, uh, folks? There, there's uh, there's order a ca catalog order places that you can buy them. And the best way if you can buy an old uh, find an old old junk or something that sure. you can get uh, parts off of and, and restore them. Sure. And so, Did you have one of those? Yeah. Uh, I had, a, a, I had parts, a, junk a parts dish, tractor. A parts tractor. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. That's great. Mr. Porter, thanks for being with us and showing us this beautiful 1953. You say Alice Chalmers? Chalmers. Chalmers. Uh, it's just terrific. Thanks Thank again. you, sir. Yeah. Dave Parks, thanks for having us today. Let's wrap this show up uh, with a little when, what, where, and why as to your okay. event coming up in March. Let's tell our viewers all about it. All right, uh, Southern Farm Day show coming up in March. 20, 21, and 22, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, a big event, uh, probably the biggest event that takes care of, that takes place in, in Columbus County every year. Uh, all kinds of uh, antique farm tractors, equipment, uh, implements. A little, a little bit of something for everybody. Absolutely, we've got children's games uh, uh, for the kids. We've got all kinds of things going on for the adults, tractor pool. Lots and lots of different kinds of good food to eat and uh, crafts for sale. It's just a big event and uh, we, we look forward each year for putting it on and we, uh, we're, we're praying for good weather and we want everybody to come out and join us. Dave, I'm going to be there and I hope all our folks in ATMC country can be there as well. Thanks again.